You can't help me, I mean. There's nothing I can do. You already took the money. So you can't help me out? You can't make nothing right? Do I need to come through this little hole here? I got bills to pay, and you're ripping me off. You shut the up! 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 Hard hard drive. I'm about to get pissed off. Can I get my hard drive on my computer? No. Why? I just told you. Three. That's a bull dog. Being smack deep in the heart of Detroit, the American jewelry and loan store sure gets a lot of irate customers. Fortunately, they have one heck of a bodyguard. Oh, well, actually, I'm not doing so good. No? My grandma just passed. I'm sorry. So I was like hoping to see what I could get for this. How much is your rent? 300. Okay. Um, do you have anything else? Because this unfortunately is not real. It's fake. There's nothing else to do about that. Ashley tried to explain as calmly as she could to the man. If you have a TV, you can pawn your TV. What the f I look like pawning my TV? Do you have a TV? Um, yeah, I got a TV. Okay. But why would I do that? Since her attempt to help wasn't appreciated, Ashley thought this guy would take his business elsewhere. I need to speak with somebody else because you irritate me flat out. I'm you trying mean? to help you solve like this issue. Like lower your voice. This guy's acting really erratic and it's making me really nervous. Lower your voice, Don't lower your tell voice. Me. He was going too far. Pushing his hands into a face like that, Byron, who was nearby, decided to act immediately. You got me. No, I ain't by myself, my man. She ain't by herself, my man. No, I calm down, my man. Let's go. Two customers thought it would be a great idea to try their hand at playing on a slot machine up for sale at the store. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> I wonder how much that is. You got it. Nothing. They're at a pawn store, not a casino. It's crazy how they're actually convinced they deserve to be compensated. When we right, first right, walked up right, in there, right, right. and so therefore, that's what made her and I right. come over here to yeah, try it. Yeah. I want to talk to the manager. You are. You are. You're the manager. I'm the manager. Oh, nice. Oh, oh, they're going to just say we're not going to get anything. You're, 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 you're not going to get anything. When things got so out of hand that it almost seemed as if they were going to assault Seth, Byron decided to toss these people out. Oh, no, no, no. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Please, let's go. That's what I want to know. If you touch me, I will. Well, just keep walking. Don't tell me what to do, though. Get your daughter. Don't put your hands on. Get your daughter. Les found himself attending to this customer who was looking to sell off a watch. Trying to get a loan. Where are you from? Dallas. Dallas. What are you doing in Detroit? I'm working. Trying to get home, though. It's too cold. Well, you should have been on a jacket. What you got here? A watch my grandmother gave me. That's a lot of money, but the watch could be well worth around that amount if only it was made from the right metal. Yeah, you see these this discoloration on the side? No. You don't see the rose color metal in there? Looks like copper? No. I see gold. But it's not gold. Again, Les found himself having to deal with a vexed man who can't seem to accept the fact he brought in something fake. Can I talk to somebody that knows what they're doing? I understand that. But it's got no value. It does have value. How about your chain? You want to palm me your chain? This is a bunch of bull man. Since he wasn't willing to listen, Les thought it would be a great idea to pull Byron into the equation in case he tries anything funny. Well, I wouldn't really call him names. We're not calling you any names. See, what did you want for this watch? I want 500. Nothing. Stop being a bitch. This is the worst pawn shop in the city. Les didn't really have to toss his watch on the ground, but it was well deserved. He was too disrespectful. Yo, you get him. Yeah. Let's go, my man. Have a good day, sir. Have a good, have a good day, sir. Have a good day, my man. You're a bitch, man. Yeah. Guess the bitch won this one, all right? A customer walked in and, with a very straight face, made one of the most egregious requests Les has ever heard. Who's the manager? I'm the manager. You're the manager? Uh-huh. So you can help me then. I came in here, I sold a TV. Flat screen is 73 inches. I was wanting uh, 500 for it. And gave me 300. I need more money. This guy clearly isn't in the right frame of mind, because why would he think he could just waltz in to ask for more money and then get it? When the girl handed you the money and the ticket, you signed it for $300. You can't help me, I mean. There's nothing I can do. You already took the money. So you can't help me out? You can't make nothing right? Do I need to come through this little hole here? I got bills to pay, and you're ripping me off. Threatening violence is the absolute worst thing to do. And 
And this guy is going to find that out the hard way. That's not enough money for what I gave you. You ain't getting Goodbye, young man. Can't you give me something else? Time to go, my man. Can't you give me something else? What? Time to go, my man. Walk out, my man. A customer came in, ticked off over a defective item he got at the store. Hey, man, I need to talk to somebody about this. This piece of junk I bought in here just a couple days ago don't work now. It's broken. What I was doing on it, so two days later, it don't even work, so... Do you have your receipt? I don't have a receipt. I didn't think I needed to keep it. There's nothing I can do for you without a receipt. Tossing the receipt is a very huge blunder, and without it, there's no way he's going to get a refund. How about you just get my money? And then we won't, you know, we won't have any more problems with this. But I'm I don't not, have I'm any not... problems now. Well, it could be a problem. I need my mother money back. I, I understand that, and I'd like to give your mother. I'm gonna money give back. me my money back. I'm not gonna. Thinking he could probably handle Byron, the customer tried to start a fight. Oh, 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 here, like, oh I, mean, I don't need you. Don't put your hands on me. I don't need you. Come on, 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 come Bring a few more. That's it, buddy. Bring a few more. That's it, my man. Bring a few more. Here's your machine, buddy. Don't come in here threatening us. We don't go for that. Customer walked into the store making silly demands, expecting Les to just bend over backwards and do his bidding. I found my computer. I wanted to come and get my hard drive for me. I got stuff on it. When you get out of pawn, you can have it back. But all you got to do is go back there and just I grab it out. We have to, to do, me. but I understand that. But I can't give it to you unless you take it out of pawn. Maybe if he'd been smart enough to get everything he wanted sorted out before he pawned it, he wouldn't be in this mess. I had hard drive. I'm about to get pissed off. Can I get my hard drive on my computer? No. Why? I just told you. Three That's a bull dog. Now I remember why I stopped working the window 20 years ago. Dog, give me my dog. We're short staff. We have a line full of people. I can't deal with them. Anymore. The guy was pushing buttons and Les was done listening to his rant. So he got mad and yelled back. What's going on, dog? You gonna walk up to me like that dog? That dog is gonna get, get out my face. Escorted out of here. Get my up. Who let the dog out? Byron let the dog out. Tell some dog, get off. Y'all my got me. Aaron had the pleasure of dealing with this not quite noble gentleman who was in the store, looking to get his hands on a refund without a receipt. Just bought this coat here about a week ago, riding down the road and the thing just shreds up. Uh, I want my money back. Do you have your receipt? No, isn't this receipt enough? No, it's not. I need a receipt. You just seen me here last week. I'm sorry. I don't remember you. Karen tried to make things clear to this customer, but he was dead set on leaving with something. I can't give you another code without a receipt. Them? I'll just take one. Uh, what do we got? Byron? What do we you got here? You want to assist here? us, sir? What's wrong? I'll take this whole damn wreck. Hold on, my man. Hold on, I'll take this man, whole wreck. What? This ain't, this ain't you, man. Since he's decided to make a scene, establishing himself as a threat in the process, he had to be neutralized. Walk yourself out, bro. You gonna get my coat, bro? Get my damn coat, man. The thing's flopping in the Here, damn you wind. Know what, sir? I'm you going can have coat. Two guys walked in trying to turn in a couple of construction tools they got at the store. Surprisingly, they actually brought their receipt with them. Man, they tried, they tested them when we was here, but when we got to our work site, it just stopped working. All three of these things don't work? No, no, they all don't work. Uh, we doing construction. Great. So how are we okay. going to do construction if this don't work? Where's the battery? It was just too good to be true. They probably took the batteries out on purpose. Oh, that works. What did you say? Because it wasn't working after jobs. Like okay, let's look at this one, too. We're going to get the job. See where it says no How cash refunds? This. No cash. It don't matter. It don't matter refunds. about that. It don't matter don't about that. Don't grab it out of my hand. Apart from the no cash refund policy, the fact that they seem reluctant to procure the batteries is pretty suspicious. Give us our money back right now. We are not going to give you anything. You're going to lose your money. We are not going to give it to you. Look, this is not working at the job site, like, so why? It's, it's working out. You shut your up. 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 The security team moved in immediately to curb this meltdown that was getting way out of hand. Thank you. That's why were they here? I called them. Good job. Have a nice day. Yeah, we walk in now. This guy came in hoping to make a trade for an anniversary for his wife. I need to get a watch for my wife's anniversary. Oh, it's not your anniversary too?
Well, yeah, it is mine too. How many years you been together? 25 years. Oh, okay. How many good ones? She said this belonged to my grandmother a long, long time ago, and it's probably worth a lot of money. I just want to bring it up and see what you think. Uh... That's just tough. He's planning on financing the gift by trading away a family heirloom. I tell me the truth. They're not real. But it was fake when it was made, and it's still fake. I can tell this is fake because of the clasp and the color of the chain. It's fake. He should know that it's time to leave unless he's got something else to trade. What are you saying? This is worth absolutely nothing. Absolutely. That's bull okay. I got an anniversary coming up. I'm not getting in trouble. You're married, right? I am. Okay, I've seen your wife. Lucky you. Yeah, lucky me. I don't think so. Les wasn't going to sit by and let the shameless man threaten his family like that, so he made sure to speak up. There's two things you don't talk about. What's that? My wife and my family. Oh, kid, oh, here's the deal. The little boy in that badass daughter. Two of you. Here's the deal. Get out of here. Two of you. I'll hurt you guys so bad. Uh -huh. Sure you, you will. better get the present. Sure you will. Just like the name suggests, the American Jewelry and Loan Store also dabbles in jewelry, so occasionally they get customers looking to sell some. I want to sell this right here. How much time to sell it for? 400. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to get you that much to sell it. How close you talking about coming to? Probably a couple hundred. A couple of hundred. They obviously checked on a scale, so this man is just trying to bully them into dropping more than they should for his wear. 200. That's about right. Nah, man. That's 14K right there. It's worth it's more 10 than 10 carats. I'm saying, if you're feeling that way, man, come on out here and holler at me, man. If it's a fight he wants, it's a fight he'll get. Seth isn't one to chicken out from a confrontation, especially in his own store. It's worth 400, man. It's That's not what I'm trying to take. We said 200. Do you want I'm it? Saying or it's not? worth, worth like 400, man. Iron, as always, immediately came to the rescue because it's his job too. And he managed to push him out before they could start swinging blows. Have a good day, bud. Have a good day. Have a good day. Go, you gotta go, my man. First up, we've got this customer who was in the store looking to sell off his DVD player. I'd like to sell this DVD VHS combo. I paid 60 for it, brand new. So I'd like to get about 50 for it. Get the remote? Um, no, it has buttons on the front. No one would ever want to get a DVD player without the remote, and getting a replacement is just too much work. Remote, I couldn't give you $50. Okay, well, we can you do... Them. Can I talk, please? Can I do $40? You want 20? I want 40. No. For no reason whatsoever, this guy decided to mimic Ashley's movements in a bid to get her all worked up. Unfortunately, it worked. Have a good day. Well, I'm not leaving till I get 40. Oh, well, we close at 6. You can sit on the floor if you like. Okay. Hey, hey let's go. Come on. Yep. You forgot I your want DVD, DVD. VHS I want my DVD. player. Okay, come on. An employee at the store thought he would be selling something when he had to attend to a customer who seemed interested in one of their TVs. I'm going to tell you a little something funny about this TV here, Cat. I was in here two weeks ago, sold you this mother for 90 bucks, and now you're going to ask me 400 for it, man? Are you kidding me? That's just wild, but to be expected. It's a business after all, and there's no guarantee they'll actually sell it for that amount too. $90, man? And then y'all gonna sell it for 400? You gonna make that much profit off me, brother? Where's your receipt? Can you not understand English, my brother? No. It's clearly a scam, and even if he really did get burned, there's nothing anyone can do about it. No one forced him into selling. Who are you, Green Mile? You're talking luck, and they're not gonna be happy. I ain't going out the door, man. Y'all ain't going to put me on no door, man. I ain't going nowhere until I get this TV. All right, cool. Yeah, get above me. During the scuffle that ensued in their attempt to get him out, the man lost his shoes. My damn shoe, player. Y'all got my shoe. You got my money. this joint. This guy was acting like a total baby. He wanted attention, and he got it. The customer came into the store to sell his very odd contraption. It's supposed to cure all kinds of ailments. Colds, blackheads, flu, blood disease, kidney disease, blindness, baldness. Making such a claim while talking to two bald men is pretty bold, but a very funny jibe. Oh. <laughs> Wow. Whoa. No, that's enough. So you can adjust the frequency of the electric shock. Yes. Apparently these... Oh. <laughs> Just because it isn't as old as they would like to think it is doesn't mean it isn't still worth checking out, though. Thinking around $175. How'd you come up with that? 
what they recently sold for online. What would you really take for it? Oh, 150 would be good. The man should have stood his ground on one price. The moment he started going lower, Lairs knew he could get the machine for dirt cheap. You wouldn't take 25. Thirty dollars. Nope. The chief negotiator. Okay, 25, I'll do it. Karen found herself in a pickle when she had to handle a very difficult guy who came in looking for employment. I need a job, Karen. Okay, well, we have a whole process of doing that. You have to fill out an application. I don't have time to fill out an application, Karen. Well, I can't just hire you on the spot. Karen tried her best to explain the process to this guy, but he thought he could aggressively sing his way into getting a job. American jewelry alone. You're pretty talented. Can I get a job I today, I today, today, today? Can I get a job? Not today. Since he was being a nuisance, Byron inched in to get this guy out of there. Oh, big man. The Lord, you lay the hands. Lord told me to lay hands on somebody. Lay I don't hands, know though. who it's going to no, be. No, get deep behind me, It's going to be you, Karen. It ain't going to be me. Come on. Let's get on the body of here, baby. Body. Try one more time, bro. You good. Yeah. You almost there, bro. Karen. Ashley had to attend to this customer who was looking to sell some of his jewelry for a quick buck. Here today uh, to see if you would be interested in buying some jewelry. Let me see what you got. All right. A couple of watch here today. Um, my fiance is in the Ukraine. The customer seemed very enthusiastic about sharing his story with Ashley. No, don't really socialize that much. Uh, so I, uh, I invested in in a Russian dating site. We knew very quickly and we got engaged. Oh, so you've been with her since? Yeah, twice. You've only been with your fiance twice. That's kind of shady. Hopefully he's not some lonely chap who's going to get taken advantage of. I was hoping to get around $1,100. $1,100? Mm -hmm. It's not going to be anywhere near that. I'll do $450. Ashley seemed quite set on that price, but after the customer prodded a bit, she decided to relent. $475. You got a deal. Is that a deal? Yeah. Thank you, Peter. Thanks, Ashley. This lady walked into the store looking a tad bit worse for wear. How much did you want for the TV? I want 500 for it. That's what I was saying. We actually sell them for under 250 bucks. Okay. Since Lairs refused to give her what she wanted, she thought flashing him would hypnotize him into doing so or something. Are these worth $500 to you? Not really. No, these aren't worth five hundred dollars. Really, they're seventy-five hundred dollars. This woman is definitely crazy, that's for sure. And with how desperate she seems, it wouldn't be far-fetched to feel she's a drug addict. Anybody that pulls so their boobs out in the want. middle of a store oh, is has what? to be all there. Oh, I am all that's there. That's what I just said, and I could see. I'm all there. You were all there twice. <laughs> Thank you. Forget it. Thank yeah. you very much. Seeking respite from the rain, this guy thought he could sell his coffee machine at the store. You all right? I'm doing well. How are you? Hey, I'm straight, man. I'm bugging out. Bro, it's brand new, man. It's 40 bucks. Mm -hmm. I just need to go get a hotel, man. We so it's brand man. new, right? Yeah, man. Okay. 40 dollars. Just, right. just give me 25, man. Yeah, so it's not brand new. It's It's been used. I mean, it's a good brand and it's new. Who's he trying to fool? Seth didn't want anything to do with the machine after he took a look at it. Where was this? Outside it the was... dumpster? How am I supposed to sell this? Man, that's like some coffee or something. It, it's hot. It, but look at it. It's melted there, too. That's not... All right, give me 20, man. I'm not interested in it. Give me, give me, give me, give me $10, man. I'm not interested. Man, give me $10, man. After his forceful attempt didn't work, the customer decided to utilize a softer approach. I'm acting like an ass. I'm acting like an ass. I'm trying to give you a good when you started screaming. Man, listen. I'm almost done here, man. You are done. You're done. Hold on, man. I ain't going nowhere, man. That'll hopefully teach him some manners, at least, since he's lacking in that department. Let me get my right there. Don't be throwing my man. Oh, now my wet. Nah, that. It wasn't wet when I brought it in. It's raining now, bro. Man, y'all's a mother. The customer came into the store and decided to take his pick out of the numerous items there. The only issue with that is he wasn't in there to buy, but to sell. What the hell's going on? Hey man, I need some money. I got kicked out. My mama kicked me out last night. What can you give me for all this? This guy really has a lot of nerve, and if it's a joke, it's a silly one. You think I'm that stupid that I didn't see you pull the shit off the floor? <laughs> you, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do about it, bald headed? Get out of my store. You understand what, what I just said? What are you gonna said? do if I don't? Do it. 
While he was getting hauled out, the man had a very unfortunate wardrobe malfunction that left his posterior bare for all to see. Uh, oh, your pants are falling down, buddy. Stand up. Stand up. And what an ass that was. Seth has to handle this customer who came in to sell a couple of jewelry pieces. How can I help you? I need to sell this earring because my little red Corvette broke down. Oh, no kidding. Absolutely. Wow, imagine that. Could check that out for me? Sure. That was definitely a show, but couldn't he have just told Seth who he is like a normal person would? Wow. <laughs> oh. It reminds me of the, the bird up there. You know what? Look hey. at this service that I'm getting. I can see why doves cry. Oh, oh that, okay. <laughs> That's it. Oh. Oh, and you're watching it. <laughs> Having had enough, Seth tried to push for the deal, since that's all that really mattered. No, that's not real. You're going to help me out. Huh? Excuse me? That's a real earring, but it's not a real diamond. Are you kidding me? Trust me. I am not kidding oh, you. You're not joking. Imitation prints, imitation earring. Is that right? That's right. Something. He's about to do something. Ah, oh, that's not okay. A pregnant lady came into the store hoping to get an item that had caught her eye on a previous trip. Okay, and last week when you were here, how much were you quoted? Well, I was quoted $20 for it. You were quoted 20 Seems she doesn't exactly have the money still, but was hoping to appeal to Ashley's better nature. I try to look for a job and stuff, but it's just hard right now. And this is something that I want to get for my baby. This would mean so much to me. Okay, I'm a mom. My gift to you is the remaining 15 That'll be great. That worked. Ashley really decided to help this lady, which is a real surprise since she's usually hard on everyone. You know, my dad bought this horse years ago. And even if it is only going to sell for $5, oh, thank you it's so oh, much. my pleasure. Anything to help you and the baby. That was unexpected. It was just an elaborate scam, but all just to get their hands on an item worth $20? Unbelievable. Tyler tries to play Les, but finds out he's a pro. Les has been playing the no receipt game for years now. 25 bucks, man, come on. Man, man step your back, man, step back. Man, come on, you gonna talk to me? Orderly, I'm speaking English, yes, say. You get it? Show me the receipt. I ain't got no receipt, man. Well, how can I give you another unit, another game, if you don't Because I receipt? bought it from here, man. I bought it right over there. I will be more than happy to exchange it for you. When you bring me the receipt. The refund department is outside the store, but unfortunately for the guy, they didn't come to work today. We're gonna go right here to the refund. Man, I ain't going over there. What do you want? I got Get off me, man! You go on. Man, you ready? Man, I ain't going over there. You go on. Man, you get off me, man. Let's go. Man, Let's go. Man, go on. A customer comes in fuming and ripping, but Les can't do anything to help him without a receipt. Of course, Byron can. This piece of junk I bought in here just a couple days ago it don't work now, it's broken. What is it? A little ab lounger I bought here, man. Work out now. Here it I is. I do see that you work out. Eh? Ain't no question yeah, about yeah. that. I need my mother money back. I, I understand that. And I'd like to give your mother yeah. money back. I'm gonna give you my money back. I'm not gonna do yes, anything. You are. I'm not gonna and do you, anything. Other, other, and you can back off too, man. The only problem will be deciding the quickest way to drag the man out of the store. Look here, man. You better back off too, oh, bro, man. Don't, like, don't touch oh, him. Come on. Come on. Let's go. Really? Bring a few more. That's it, buddy. Bring a few more. That's it, my man. Bring a few more. There's your f machine, buddy. A customer tries to pull a new phone out of Bobby, but soon realizes that isn't happening. I just got this phone that I bought here like two, three days ago, and this don't work. The camera don't work. It keeps freezing and like that. Did you download a camera function? No. It clearly got a camera. Why would I have to download it? Just asking. There's nothing I can do for you. And getting irate with me, me is not going to help you out. Who sold the phone to you in the first place? Somebody. He here. Right there. Him right there. Yeah, you. You sold me this phone right here. The customer is one of many speaking at precise times, but he needs help understanding Bobby's clear no. You didn't buy that from us? Yes, I clearly did. Thank you very much. I appreciate Sprint you coming on over here. You can go back to before. selling that computer. No, hold on. No, no, no. Don't touch him and let him go. Man, you and your mohawk, shut the hell up. Clearly can't hear me. There, it's off. Do this there. phone work? It's a simple question. Does this phone work? You know what, Joel? Can you go show him how it works? Uh, take a picture out in the parking lot. The next customer who comes into the store is already mad. You know what that means. 
The conversation is a bomb waiting to explode. My wedding ring that's $5,000, you guys have it. I want it back. Okay. Where's the pawn ticket? And I'm coming to you to get my ring back. I didn't know what else to tell this lady. Yes, I feel terrible for her, but I can't help her without her ticket. Instead of going off on Ashley, this lady must confront her husband for pawning her ring without her permission. All the yelling will get her kicked out of the store. Oh my god, I want my ring. Can okay, you so get let in the me... computer okay, so and let look me... up the name, okay, tell me how so... much I owe you, and give me my <laughs> All you gotta do is take your pretty little fingers and type it in. Let me talk. Give me my ring. Do you shut up for a oh, second? You ain't never shut get up. the hell out of here. No, it's time to go. I'm yours. I want to see you oh, walk outside. Come please. on. This customer's memory is as short as her temper, which differs from the combination to get money from Ashley. Unfortunately, the lady doesn't realize it. There you go. Perfect. And how much did you want to get on this today? At least 165. Uh, how's 125 for you? No, I'm sorry, I can't do that. I'm here to help you. Okay, well, you have a really, really bad attitude. It's like you don't like your job. If you don't like your job, you shouldn't work here, sweetheart. I'm sorry. What's going on here? The lady goes off unprovoked, despite taking so much time figuring out the password and Ashley not being mad. It's like she's spoiling for a fight, and she gets one from an unexpected place. Respectful. Learn how to talk. Learn how to talk. Learn how to talk. Have a good day. You were too silly. Sorry. Don't touch my stuff. You were so silly. Hi. What the f you looking at, bitch? What the f you looking at? Oh, you don't touch me, stupid bitch. You this woman came out of her car screaming. She planned to scare an employee and make them do what she asked. But Les trained his employees well. Procedures first, actions later. Little did she know, Ashley was watching from behind the counter and she was about to get served. Yes, um, my boyfriend timed my TV um, and I need it back. I don't got no slip or nothing, but I need my TV. You have to wait in line. I ain't waiting in line. I woke up this morning and my TV was down. How do you know it's here? Because my boyfriend told me it was here. Okay, so he stole it from you. Yeah. Okay, so what you need to do is go make a police report. No! I can't give you a TV. You are, oh, okay. Where the TV's at? I think this is my TV over here. First, you do not look like you own a TV that large. Second, don't ever go beyond what you cannot handle. And before you do something more stupid, Hurricane Ashley will have Big Joe send you out of the premises at no cost. Hey, I'll be back. I will be back. Where I'm here. The madness did not end indoors. It extended significantly outside the premises. The customer made a foolish decision. This for that. A cone for a TV. She tried, but I bet can never outdo it. I'm taking this <laughs> I'm gonna take your Two women came into Les Gold's store to retrieve a pawned item with a fake ticket, and they got the brutal truth from Les's mouth. It was a rain pour of fidgeting from the older ladies toward the pawn shop's employee until Les took it upon himself to cover the tracks. This isn't our ticket. What do you mean it's not your ticket? Say American Jury right there at the top. What the f you looking at it all, stupid folk, bitch? You can read. I drove all the way home to get that ticket. Uh huh. Okay. I need to make sure it's here then. The issue is this is a counterfeit ticket. I will be back with my attorney. And I'll be more than happy to explain it to them. One would believe and expect the older lady's threat of attorney to be empty canisters of mouthed words with no real life action to back it up. You picked the wrong place to f with the wrong pawnbroker. When they come back with their lawyer, I'll be happy to show them exactly how I know it's a bull ticket. The older ladies returned with an attorney as prominent as a bouncing castle. It was almost as though they got a bouncer and not an attorney to represent them at the store. What happens next will blow your jaws open. This is the guy? Right there. Here they come again. Les? Hi, how are you? I am attorney Kyle Dupuy. Angie has retained me to represent her in regard to a ring. Okay. This is what our receipts actually look like. Number one, our tickets do not have this many numbers. These are the amount of numbers that we have. This is the amount of numbers that are here. Okay. Number he two. didn't get it from here. He didn't yeah. get it from here. So now we just liars and we just come here. I'm not saying that you are. The truth will reveal itself, right? But imagine shooting a gun in the air and ending up receiving it in your rear end. 
Les Gold's honest play gave a satisfactory result when the lawyer turned around and made the right and justified call on his client to settle the dispute. This would have turned into a racism dispute, but thankfully Les has Joe to cover for his Caucasian skin. Numbers don't match up. The paper stack doesn't match up. This is a fake. Uh, I, I don't believe that the store gave you this ticket. Nah, well, I don't yeah. believe you a real attorney. Yeah, we ain't got it right. This boy, this somebody you, better you give me people, my money. You with these what mother you boy, and been. you boy, too. I don't know what kind of mother attorney you is, but you gonna collect my, I'm gonna collect it out your ass. Without consulting his dad, Seth thought it best to make a decision that would largely impact the store. Why, when I pull up security cam footage, do I see you walking all around Jeff's desk. If Seth had bothered to even let Bobby J finish his sentences, maybe he'd understand why he went back there. I grabbed the polishing cloth. Yeah, and then what? Are you supposed to grab anything from back there? No. So what happens if you go back there? You're fired. Bingo, you get fired. Being a very loyal employee who's been with them for years, Bobby J couldn't believe his ears at all. Really? Les sent me back there. My dad sent you back there? He did. I didn't just go back there on my own. Your father sent Fine. me back there. Fine. You're not fired? I'm sorry. I'll handle it. That's not the only time a member of the Gold family almost lost a loyal employee over something so minuscule. Sit down, please. Yes. It's been brought to my attention that you have told Linda to get away from me, you bitch. Prove it. I ain't doing that. Tell me the truth and you'll be okay. You don't matter. I'm gonna lose anyway. It's the difference it Whatever I'm gonna do. It's her words against his. So if he doesn't budge, there's nothing they can really do. Well, ask one more time. Did you say get out of my way, you bitch? Don't leave me alone, bitch. Get the real okay. okay. Since he told the truth, they didn't have to take drastic measures. However, their solution was silly, since it would only breed resentment. I'm suspending you till Saturday. Okay. Alright. You can sign this. I can't take it with me. See you Saturday. Maybe. Don't, hey, Tony, come back here. Excuse me. Tony, come back here. Sit down. I cannot believe that just happened. Ashley tried to meddle by fanning the flames, but Les made sure to shut her down. What's the most unbelievable thing is he lied to your face, and you even gave him the chance to have the opportunity to come back. How many chances can I give this guy? Ashley, how many chances can I give you? Me? You. Despite kicking against this new location every step of the way, the Gold siblings had a sudden change of heart when the new facts came into play. So, here's the deal. Now that we own the store, I'm gonna let you guys decide who's gonna run it. If one of us is gonna run it, I 100% should run it. I was here way before my brother, and I helped my dad make this business. Having worked under her father for longer, Ashley thought it was well-deserved, but Seth wasn't gonna let it go that easy. By the end of the day, I want the answer. We'll just write I'll right down do right, it now. right now. It's my Dad. name. Seth, enough. I think you need to discuss a little and There's realize. No, need to discuss. discuss with her and we need to Dad, I was with you from the beginning here. From the he beginning, then she bailed twice. Later in the day, Seth decides to talk things out with his sister. You can't even run this store by yourself. What? You, you have Daddy looking over your back with all your stuff now. You can't run it by yourself. Most of the business at the other store is jewelry. This is my specialty. If it really falls under Ashley's specialty, then it's only expected she gets it. But Seth wants the autonomy, so he can't let that happen. How'd you come in? Your tricycle? I did all the heavy lifting with him. You haven't lifted yes, anything. I have, in Seth. You and you come with me. So what did you guys decide? I'm I'm that I'm sure. Seeing how hard it is for the duo to make a decision, Les decides to make a tough call. It's gonna be Dreama. What? She's prepared to run the new store. She's good enough, she knows how to run employees, and because of that, I'm gonna allow her to run the new operation. A guy looking to get a job as one of the many security officers at the store approached Ashley. Hi. I need a job application. Okay, what position are you wanting? Uh, I'm trying to be security. You finished already? Since it's a security position, they have to run a background check first. Someone told me to come in and fill out the app, and you know, he said he got me. Who was it? Rich. Oh, you already talked to Rich? We're actually good friends. We hang out all the time. Let me talk to Rich. Rich can only recommend a friend. He can't exactly hand the job over. So if he really did say what the guy said he did, he's in trouble. Yeah. What's going on, Rich? He hey. said you told him that you were going to hire him for security. 
when you want me to start? Tell the truth, I don't even remember ever talking to you before. Man, you're supposed Everybody. to get me in here. You talking Why am about? I supposed to get you in here? I don't even know who the hell you are. Rich, what are you talking about, man? If Rick is acting, then he's good. Because of his disposition, he seems way too clueless. Let's make this real quick and simple. You're fired. <laughs> you gonna do me like that, bro? Just like that. That's security, guys. Nice out. working with you. Bro, talk about outside, right? Man, don't, don't touch You're that. You're fired. That was actually great. Ashley decides to make a trip down to the warehouse and couldn't help but perceive the overpowering odor of weed in there. Oh my god. Have you been back in the warehouse today? No. It smells like weed. Since she can't solve this case alone, Ashley had to involve Les and Seth hoping they can find a way to deal with this mysterious smoker. I just went in the warehouse and I smelled weed. What? I just smelled weed in the back. Whereabouts in the back? I don't know, but it reeks of weed back there. Les notices Rich has decided to abandon his station during a pivotal moment. I'm watching you and Bobby J talk to these two girls. You're there trying to sweet talk them, trying to bull with them. They end up walking out the front door. I'm looking for you in Layway. Where the hell are you? The next person that up is gonna be fired. Rich has gotten too comfortable. So comfortable he thought he was above getting fired. Compared to what I've done for you for 25 freaking years? If I don't go forward with the things that I threatened everybody with, nobody will take my word for anything. I have 50 other people, Rich. That definitely struck home. Les wasn't gonna let him go with the slap on the wrist after what he just said. F you, get out of the store. Really? Really? Seth decided to swap Nikki and Christina stations after Christina claimed she was feeling overwhelmed by the numerous customers. Cry baby. Get your ass back down there. What? Every role was assigned on a merit-based system. Since Nikki earned her spot, she was feeling aggrieved with the arrangement. What the hell's going on here? Seth told me to force sh shut up. Can you shut up? He's talking, talking to me. I'm better talking than her. To me. Seth talking to me. Shut the hell up. He's okay, to okay, me. okay. I want my chair back. It's one thing if customers are arguing, but not my employees. Rather than make it known that they're not united on that front, Les decided to do the more mature thing by approaching Seth first. Christina asked me, she was dealing with an irate customer. I switched her window to window one. What's the problem? You need to earn window one. Just because Christina's having a bad day doesn't give her the right. Seth seems to have forgotten his father has been running the business for a very long time, so he knows more than he does. I've done this already, Seth. I've worked through all these uh, issues. When will this end? I made a simple swap at the windows. Christina's staying there. Guess what, Seth? Still my store. Your brother's an ass. While going through the list of pawn merchandise, Les couldn't help but notice a few discrepancies there. I was going through potentially expired pawns. Okay. I looked it up. It said Pandora. So I pulled it out, showed it to him. Let me pull up her account. Let me see if she has anything in pawn. Having caught on to her, they had to gather more evidence to make sure it's not an accident. What's that? All the stuff. From? Christina's account. Yeah, another Pandora bracelet for 400 It's not real. That watch? That watch? 50 for a watch, you get $10 a month. Les couldn't believe this at all. Christina, his trusted employee, had actually been stealing from him. So they're all past due? No, she kept well, extensions. She extending kept them. Extending them. So extending they would never them. show up as being pulled. That's yeah. exactly right. She missed one. Yep. Yeah. With all the facts and evidence, all collected and ready, it was finally time to confront Christina. Put up the loan. Okay, I wrote it up, but I only did it when we were busy. So that who was at the desk just never paid any attention to it. Since the jig is up, Christina didn't bother trying to cover it up. She admitted the fact that she really did everything they thought she did. So in other words, you wrote up a fake ticket and stole money from us. Yeah. Yes. How much money do you think you've stolen from American Jewelry? She had done a lot of damage, but Les thought it would be best if he decided to cut a deal and root out all the tumors while he was at it. Want to get out of jail? Mm -hmm. I'm going to stop the bleeding. I'm going to stop it here and now. Set me free, Christina. Christina seemed ready to talk, but backpedaled after thinking things through. I don't know anybody that's stolen today. You're sure? I but you've already admitted that you stole more than $1,000, correct? 
It's over. I want to help you, Christina. Since she didn't take the hand she was offered, Christina was officially let go and handed over to the police. While making rounds, Les is shocked to find that the laptop room at the store had been broken into. What the f is this? Rodney! A laptop and two video games are missing. And now this? To get answers, he angrily marched off to meet Rodney, who's the warehouse manager. Explain that to me. You know what? I caught Justin just the other day breaking into the laptop room, trying to get a laptop out. The laptop room contains thousands of dollars worth of merchandise. I guarantee you Justin did that. To teach him a lesson, Les decided to call for a meeting with all his employees manning the warehouse. I need to get in there to get that laptop, so I just went in there and got it. But you have permission to go in there no matter how you get in there, you have permission. Am I correct? Do you? Getting called out like that in front of those people is pretty bad but he's facing the consequences of his action. No, I would never steal anything. It's just to do my job. When I'll, I'll ask Rodney for the key, I'll say, look, I need a laptop. It's, this has happened before. I'm waiting for 20 minutes and Rodney doesn't show up to get this laptop, like if he's on break or if he's gone. Why didn't Les know of this issue then? He could have complained to him about Rodney's lackluster attitude towards the job. You broke my trust. And because of that, Justin, you're fired. I This man walks into the store, fuming about a wrong gaming system. The store accidentally gave him the wrong one from their pawn inventory. To make up for it, they loaned him another system while they searched for his original one. I paid for my to get back, not nobody else. I don't want nobody. I want my shit. Your mother give me my shit for my mother money. I'm trying to make a life for me. You're not working with me if you're not paying me for my Our customer, now on the brink of a meltdown, makes his displeasure very clear. The employees scramble to fix things, offering a refund or another week to find the lost item. The man's temper flares, causing quite the commotion. Apparently he's not very happy with the gaming system we gave him. Not sure why, but it doesn't matter, it's our screw up. I can give you the money back that you paid to redeem it, or you can just wait a week. I'm the man, you're a sure, man. Are you pissing me off? I don't give a f who, how many m****s you got with you? I don't give a f partner. What does that mean? Then, Les, trying to be the hero, steps in. He offers the man $150 and a temporary gaming system, hoping to strike a deal. After some tense negotiation, the customer agrees. He leaves with the money and the loaner system, but not without a promise. If things don't get sorted soon, they will see more of him. No, he's just being an ass about it. F him. F you. And the next thing I know, hit the fan. Okay, okay. No, 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 no. Can you and I talk? Yeah. I give you my word, whatever I owe you, you're gonna get. You don't think I'm supposed to be mad? Well, here's what I can give you. I'll give you 150 bucks. I can let you use a game temporarily. He tells me I can run stuff, and then he doesn't give me the power to do it. You know what, Dad? If I'm in charge of the warehouse, let me be in charge of it. Let me make the decisions. You have to trust me every once in a while. This young man walks in all frazzled up. His pitch? Selling his wares, but the crew isn't biting. He amps up, demanding a second shot, clamoring for a cash out. Tension soar. I'm just looking for a couple dollars, you know what I'm saying? To be honest, I don't think we're gonna take them, brother. You say what? We're not interested. Let me speak to somebody else back there. No. Yeah, I'm not interested. For real? For real. Damn, y'all ain't trying to look out at all. And then well, you got cubs. You right know here. it's outdated. You got pops standing behind me. What's up with that? Nothing. You guys caused me a scene, so. Y'all about to rush me or something? As the man's frustration reach a boiling point, he's yelling and tossing around some big words. But the gang? Cool as ice, with backup on standby. Eventually, he is escorted out, still grumbling. Within mere seconds, the store is back to business as usual. Nothing too crazy. Anything to get the blood pumping, I guess. I mean, what's up with that? On that, on that bomb, man. Listen, my Don't be throwing the at me. You understand? You understand? Don't be ever throwing the at me. You understand that? You understand that, man? You understand that, dog? Hands off my mother. Yo, y'all ain't shit over here anyway. I smack the shit out of your ass. Don't even reach behind nowhere. Reach what? Tell him carry, carry my shit out, man. We're not taking it out. That's my Look in the dumpster. It'll be there tonight. Yo, yo, I ain't Next up, a determined man strides in jealously, clutching his TV. 
the long line ahead doesn't phase him, because let's just say he had other plans. Quickly spotting an empty counter, he heads over there, unaware it's for jewelry, not electronics. Hey, I'd like to follow my TV. I'm really sorry, but I can't help you with this window, sir. This is the jewelry loan line. You gotta go to the equipment line. Ashley, the kind staff member, tried to redirect him, but he is too anxious to face the crowd and would do just about anything to avoid that line. Nervously, he pleads to avoid the long wait, but rules are rules, you know. Ma'am, I don't have the time to wait in that line. That line is way too long. I realize that. I'm really sorry. Well, I mean, can, can you, like, come out and get it? I, I really don't have time to wait in there. This, this line's empty. I mean... Okay, that's the equipment line. This is the jewelry loan line. This is bull You see that big old line? How about you go wait in that line? Seriously? Yes. That is a long line. Do not have the time to do that. Just come out here and take my TV from me. After some back and forth, Ashley has no choice but to have him shown the door. Back on the street, TV still in hand, he feels the sting of rejection. He would have to hold off pawning that TV for at least another day, it seems. Come out here like and take my TV and give me some money for it. It's bull Seth's process is making everything slower at the front. You guys you see this? Everybody see this bull what? This what? TV. I just wanted to get some money for my TV. That's Come all on. I want. Damn it! Here you go. Give, give me the TV. I throw myself at the Trina, with a heart full of love and a pocket full of determination, embarked on a quest for the perfect ring to propose to her beau. With each tried on, she could feel the excitement bubbling up inside her like a fizzy soda pop. Let's just say Bobby J won't be volunteering for anything anytime soon. I'm gonna post my boyfriend tomorrow's our sixth anniversary, six years anniversary. Really? Yes. And I'm gonna get him a ring. You looking to get a ring? Yes. Yeah. Okay. That second one right She's there. She's looking for a ring, Brian. You wanna help on me? On this side. Uh, I'm busy. Okay. You're on your own for this one. Thanks. Right. How much is this one? This one right here? Yes, I like that one. I'll pretend like I'm close to you, okay? Oh. Now, Tay Tay, we've been together for a while. Will you marry me? But alas, when it came time to seal the deal, her credit card was busy plotting against her. Decline, decline, decline. As frustrations grew, Trina's nerves reached their breaking point. And then, to add insult to the already substantial injury, a mix-up, mistaken for a sir. Oh, and believe me when I say that was the final nail in the coffin. Decline. It's not decline. No, it says, can, can you try to get some more, please? Sure, try to time. get it. One more time, no problem. No matter how many times I swipe it, it's not gonna change. No, look. Your oh, ass yeah. is gonna give sir. me that brain. Sir, sir, listen. Man. Sir, man. sir, man. sir, man. sir. Man. 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 With a heavy heart and an empty hand, Trina bid adieu to her perfectly dreamed up proposal surprise, leaving the store with a taste of disappointment in her mouth and then some. Get the you better get the away from me. Get the away from me, okay? Calm down. Girl, this is my anniversary now. No, act like a lady. Messing up my fucking day. I mean, I tried, okay? We tried. Lastly, with a big smile, this man has an item he wants to sell to Les, the ever eagle-eyed owner of this joint. There was just one teeny tiny problem. The man seemed to believe it was genuine and hoped to get good money for it. He even thought about exchanging it for a nice watch for his wife's 25th anniversary present. You see, Les, right from the jump, was on to him, but knew from the very first second that the item was fake. Brian, I'm Les, nice to meet you. I need to get a watch for my wife's anniversary. Oh, it's not your anniversary too? Well, yeah, it is mine too. How many years have you been together? 25 years. Oh, okay. How many good ones? Calmly, he told the man he wasn't interested. The man, instead of accepting the news gracefully, totally lost his cool. He started yelling, saying all sorts of wild things, clearly upset that Les wouldn't merely buy his fake item. Well, do you really want me to tell you what I think? I tell me the truth. They're not real. I can tell this is fake because of the class and the color of the chain. Gold isn't that shiny. It's fake, I'm not interested in it. With confidence and authority, Les put the man in his place. He reminded him firmly that selling fake items wasn't acceptable. Startled by Les's reaction, the man stifles his outburst, opting instead to crank the crazy up a notch. It's never ending with these people, I fear. But in this business, days like this come around the corner now and then. But one thing is for sure, the bravado and finesse at which Les and the gang operate will withstand all, come what may. I'm not getting in trouble. You're married, right? I am. Okay, I've seen your wife. Lucky you. Yeah, lucky me. I don't think so. What'd you just say? You heard what I said. Two 
things you don't talk about. What's that? My wife and my family. Oh, the kids? So here's the deal. The little boy in that badass daughter. Let's go. Two of you. Here's the deal. Get out of here. Two of you. I'll hurt you guys so bad. Uh -huh. Sure you will. You better get the present. Sure you will. Artists are, as a general rule, charming. But this one isn't. And it doesn't take long for Les to figure out he is nothing but a corporate bully. The owner, how you doing? I'm Mark Hollingsworth. I am the owner. I'm yes, sorry? Yes, Mark Hollingsworth. Mark Hollingsworth. Yeah, how are nice you? Nice to meet you. I'm good. Where are you from, Mark? Clearwater, Florida, but I have family up here in Northville, and we're starting a uh, towing company, recovery, uh, impounding. But say you have a car that's left overnight by some chance. It okay. doesn't happen. Well, things happen. We don't have that problem because we have fences around the building. Well, we've done a couple other business around here. I don't think you're understanding what I'm saying. Threats are no way to win over new clients, and definitely not the Pawn King. Les has dealt with different elements the streets of Detroit have to offer, and it doesn't take long to get rid of the salesman. You are not coming into my business and trying to shake me down. Do you understand me? Listen, you are Do not you under understand no, me. The way you run things right here is an old time in the past. We got a new thing going on right now. Coming Nobody in comes here. in here shaking me down. Do you understand that? No, Nobody. Will you blast escort this gentleman out of here? I'm not leaving anywhere right there. Yeah, of course you're not. Okay. I'll be back in. A customer comes in demanding the VIP treatment, but soon finds out the full package comes with an escort service out the door. I got a loan on my wife's ring. Yeah? And when I first started coming here, I got a VIP card. I got more on the loan. Now you guys put me to a gold card, and I get nothing out of it. No, the VIP is the gold. They're both one the same. <laughs> You think this is funny? I don't think it's funny. I think that there's something wrong when you start hitting your head against the side of the window. Seth's policy is, if a customer goes low, you go lower. With his dig about the guy's smarts, all hell breaks loose. You can do anything about it. What are you going to do about it? I am not going to do anything about it. <laughs> what do you think you're going to do? Whatever I have to. You need to get out of my face, bro. Good day, Good day. Hell no. Good day. Good day. You want some? Whatever you got to bring. Come on! Where are we going? My house! When an angry girlfriend tries to take her anger out on Seth, he handles her the best way you handle difficult customers, but manages to keep his cool. An impressive feat, because she is very vexing. I know you've been this mother Where the f you at? Can you please get him? I'm sorry, but who are Can you? you? Just get him for me. Mm -hmm. And so what's this regarding? Um, he's my boyfriend and he's not paying child support. You're That's his girlfriend. Hey, Randy. <clears throat> Ma'am, you piss me off. It's better to be pissed off than pissed on. Uh, Randy, you want to grab Chad for me? That's not him. Y'all playing games with me now? That's Chad. There is no other Chad in the store, but since the woman doesn't believe him, Seth decides it's time for her to go. What does he look like? He's tall. Okay. Dark. Okay. Got waves. Got waves? Yep. It was going nowhere fast. He ain't out here. Y'all gonna send me off that? Over, over there. Over he there, ain't which out side? here. He is over there. He just went over there on break. He did. Excuse he was me. looking for you. All the way over there. Les doesn't scare easily. So when this customer tries to go all gangster on him, he gets the opposite of the hoped for reaction. Piece of junk I bought in here just a couple days ago. It don't work now. It's broken. What is it? A little ab lounger I bought here, man. Work out now. Here it I is. I do see that you work out. Ain't no question yeah. about yeah. that. I need my mother money back. I, I understand that, and I'd like to give you mother I'm gonna money gonna give back. me my money back. I'm not gonna do yes, anything. You are. I'm not gonna and do you, anything. Other, other, and you can back off too, man. Or absolutely nothing. If anyone has an issue, it is the customer, not less. The guy might be big, but there are two security guys around for customers like this. Like, don't oh, touch him. Come on, 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 come come on, 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 the bigger they are, the harder they fall. Remember that. This lady wants her money back and even has her receipt, which shows she is serious about business. There is one problem, though. She didn't read the fine print on her receipt or the giant sign on the wall. First of all, I'm mad. The issue is I came in here, picked out a ring, put the money down, but the lady behind the counter didn't tell me that I won't get my money back. Put this in layaway. Yes. They printed it up on that computer over there, am I correct? Uh -huh. You see that big red sign? It says no refunds. So? Actually, you might be sad on not getting mad, but you have to give the customer what they want. This one wants war. Okay. And I'm not in the mood to get upset right now. I don't want to hear it! I can get loud just like you and make a scene if you want. Or you can act like a lady 
The customer is always right. Get your hands off me. I want to be in this place anyway. I get my later. If you want me to help you out, you need to come back at a different day, a different time, so we can handle business. The duo from Hades came at less over a simple question, and he shows them why he is the pawn king of a place like Detroit. Trying to get $350 for him. Why do you need the money? It's none of your business why I need the money. How am I mother jewelry? Why are you swearing at Because you asking me why I'm coming in here. She just told you. No, she didn't tell me. Man, you getting on my nerves, dog. How'd you get You ain't even looked at my Do you know that these aren't real? All those questions, and he couldn't even loan her some money? The woman goes back crazy after that, and Byron steps in. Ma'am, here's the way I treat customers. Ladies that act like ladies are treated like ladies. No, it don't work like It just established me. It's that boy leather coat you got. Right. Supposed to be jewelry and long. Boy ass shot. Waggedy mother. Have a nice day. This lady needs quick cash to bail out her baby daddy but actually can't do much with her card. Trying to get my baby daddy out of jail, and I've been really trying to work things out with us. I love him dearly. I was his first phone call, you know, so I, that lets me know that he loves me. Okay, I can help you, but not for that much. Yes, for that much. This bag All is right. worth at least a good 4000 by itself. This one's, this one's a good one. You want like 50 bucks? It's okay to want $1,500, but that doesn't mean the lady will get it. If she wants more, she has to offer more. No, 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 no. I don't want to hear that. I want 1500 to get my man out, OK? I want 1500 What part of that you ain't understanding? Go. Hey, Have a good day. Watch your eyes. Watch you. Be careful. Watch your eyes. You. Watch your Bring me my Watch. money. Give me a hug. No, don't give me no damn hug. A woman freaks out over a phone quote by a staff member. But Ashley is the wrong person. I'm Ashley. I'm Nana. Nana. Mm -hmm. I called up here and I got an estimate price and they told me that I could get 400 for these. Can I see your merchandise while I'm at work and while you're sitting in your living room? I don't think so. You need to come in, you need to evaluate your earrings, you need to test them. I can do 185. So what you're saying is you're not gonna give me that $400, right? No, I'm not. I and mean, you're not gonna come in here demanding money from me. Yes, the f I am because that's what I called for. Nikki does not control the store's purse. So even if she comes out, there isn't anything she can do, but the woman doesn't seem to get that. Um, excuse me. Me! First of all, you're not gonna scream in my store. Oh, first of all, you're not gonna no. walk up on me either. This is Nikki, and Nikki, she claims she talked to you at 10 o'clock this morning. I call you. Let me have Nikki give the earrings back. I need my money. No. And you can take your yeah. earring. Oh, so you gonna disrespect me like that? Well, you disrespect me in my store. Y'all bitch. Oh, y'all. Okay, have a good day. And kiss my ass. Keep walking. Nana, you bitch. Today's drama unfolds with Peter, who steps into the pawn shop with a timeless treasure, a watch inherited from his grandfather, a railroad worker from the early 1900s. Peter, seeking funds for his children's college, hopes to fetch $3,000 for this piece of history. Enter Ashley, the friendly face of the shop, who calls in Brian for an expert evaluation. I have a watch that I uh, inherited. My grandfather that worked on a railroad in the early 1900s. Let's see what we can make happen. Hey, Brian, may I ask you to help me? How about 2400 The initial offer? A mere $2,000. Peter, clearly disappointed, stands his ground. Negotiations heat up, finally reaching $2,400. But Peter, feeling undervalued, walks away leaving the deal behind. Oh, so, what I can do is I can offer you a buy price of 2000 25 to the least I'll go. Thank you so much for your... I'm giving you a gift. 2400 Final offer. The tension doesn't end there. Ashley faces a storm of criticism from Seth, who believes her lowball offer and attitude are driving customers away. Ashley, defending her actions, insists the criticism is unfair. This just goes to show how high stakes the world of pawn shop negotiations is, where every deal is a tightrope walk between profit and customer satisfaction. Why don't I get that in the beginning, that offer? Do you know where you are? You're a pawn shop. I know that. I we negotiate. That. This is correct. OK. Have a good day, now. Have a great one. I was actually on the showroom floor. You treated the guy like crap, and you lowballed him right off the bat. 
Why did you not lower ball him, Seth? Well, obviously you blew the deal, didn't you? Imagine walking into hardcore porn hoping to score a cool $500 for your prized possession. Sounds straightforward, right? Well, think again. It's a Sugar Ray Leonard bowling ball. Well, this particular ball was signed by Sugar Ray in Las Vegas. He only did that for 200 of them. So here's okay, some so uh, documentation me. that uh, shows his personal signature. It's authenticated. So, uh, how much do you want? I want $500 for it. He enters the shop with his item in hand, confident with $500 in mind. But then Seth swoops in with a counteroffer that's light years apart. This is where the magic happens, or chaos, depending on your perspective. I know, that's it. No. The result? Seth snags the item at an unbelievable price. The funny thing is, if the deal had fallen through, it'd just be another lowball offer. But since it didn't, Seth's hailed as a tough negotiator. The duality of man, eh? Okay. Come on, you can do better than that. All right, wrap it up, 200. I knew you'd come around. I wanted to see how far he would go. Well, he was going. He was going all the way out the door. A woman walks into the pawn shop with her late grandmother's jewelry, hoping to raise some cash for the funeral. Ashley, ever the skeptic, thinks they're all glass, but Les decides to call in the gemologist. Ashley's convinced it's a waste of time, but Les isn't willing to let potential thousands slip away. Um, I have these Vegas stones that I found out of my grandmother's house. She just passed not too long ago. Oh, really? I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm just trying to get enough money for her funeral. Do you know anything about the stones? No, my grandmother, she used to show me her stones. Come back in a few hours, I'll let you know what they are and how much they're worth. Because if it's just glass, I mean, I'll try to help you as much as we can. Right. I'm gonna show it to Bob, he'll make the final call. It's a waste of you'll time, see, Dad. You'll see, you'll see, you'll see. Ashley was mostly right, almost all were glass, except for one little gem worth tens or even hundreds of thousands. The customer who can't believe their luck walks away with a cool 10 grand. Appraise them, tell me what they are. My dad truly believed that this glass could be something. Dad, really? Oh my God. What is it? Check it out. Holy I mean, this is the find of a lifetime.